96, Fox Sports. What's your call, Daddy Marilyn? The battle to sell pay television has become a nasty business. Some people deserve to die. It's a blood sport. Uh, it's tough. Oh! Oh! Our richest sports are in the middle of a multi-billion dollar tug of war for pay TV. One of them has already been torn apart. Well, we're wrapped, but, uh, uh, you know, I don't think we're very happy. Tonight on Four Corners, the body count so far in the war for pay. We've been uh, subjected to probably the most uh, comprehensive corporate buffeting that any company in Australia has ever had to receive. the toughest street fight in town, fought non-stop for the last 12 months. The battle of the decade, and the prize is the 21st century. Eventually, through cable, will come the telephone, the internet, and news services like home shopping and banking. But now the lure to hook you is pay. Each of the main operators delivering up to 30 different channels. The first operator launched on Australia Day last year was Galaxy. Proudly presented by Galaxy TV. Galaxy is sometimes known by its owner's name, Australis, a publicly listed company backed by major United States investors. Galaxy multi-channel TV and 24 hours... Australis Galaxy is the only cable guy without a cable. It delivers its programs by satellite. Switch on to a whole new world of colour, action, information, music and style with Optus Vision. Foxtel, the new world of television entertainment. The heavyweights in the contest have chosen a different method of delivery. You're plugged in overhead or underground by cable. I think it's probably the toughest battle anywhere in the world. I mean, I think that's that's why I, I came. I mean, I think you have to like a good fight, and um, it's a it's a tough it's a tough pay TV marketplace. I would think there's never been in in this country a head-on confrontation of this kind where you've got very very powerful competitors spending huge amounts of money. I mean, billions and billions of dollars against one another, simultaneously in a race. <laughs> Optus Vision was the first of the cable operators on the block. It surprised its opponents by announcing it would roll out its own network to save time and money going overhead. Optus plans to reach three million homes by the end of the century at a cost of around three billion dollars. Optus Vision is backed by the long distance telephone company Optus Communications and the giant United States cable company, Continental Cablevision. Here in Australia, the Packer family's PBL has a strategic 5% holding. The Optus rollout is not just a challenge to the pay TV market. The fact that Optus Vision and Optus were prepared to announce the rollout of a, a duplicated cable network in Australia was a very clear sign that these people um, were prepared to dig very deep um, in this competitive battle. But Telstra realised it had a, a fight of massive proportions on its hands. Telstra could see that its traditional business, telephony, uh, would be undermined by a successful uh, strike by a company like Optus. Um, it could also see competition coming in the area of pay TV. It felt it had to be in a position to offer a wider range of services as well. 
With Kerry Packer already hooked up with Optus Vision, Telstra was forced into the arms of the only other man who could supply enough programs. The Foxtel joint venture was formed, a 50-50 partnership between Telstra and News Corporation. From the start, it's been the oddest of unions. Hollywood meets Woden Valley. The young and brash entrepreneurs from private enterprise hitched up to a large and aged maiden from the public sector. And according to one former insider, the aged maiden had to part with a sizeable dowry. Ross Kelso worked on Telstra's pay TV policy until June this year. How well did Telstra negotiate, do you think, with News Corporation? It negotiated as well as it could, but uh, in reality it uh, was over a barrel because there were no other major media players to deal with. So Rupert Murdoch could extract the best price he could possibly make out of uh, Telstra. Um, the joint venture involved News Corporation outlaying virtually no capital expenditure. As part of its deal with News Corporation, Telstra is meeting the full cost of laying the cable, $4 billion. As well, Telstra must pay Foxtel $150 every time it signs up a subscriber. The commercial arrangement between uh, News and Telstra is a very fair commercial uh, agreement between two joint venture partners to provide pay TV and video entertainment services. But you have to pay them $150 every time they make a connection. Oh, look, that's one component of a very complex uh, revenue sharing arrangement between the two parties. Let me say that uh, Telstra is uh, investing in the underlying infrastructure, not just for pay TV. We're building uh, the network of the future to provide many other services. Despite the array of business brains and the huge bankrolls, it always seems some basic arithmetic was missing. How do three pay TV operators fit into one small market? Certainly that's what Australia's biggest media player wondered. The truth of the matter is, you've got, uh, we've been trying to tell the government for many years and we've been trying to tell everybody else that Australia with 17 million people can't have three or four competing uh, paid organisations. It's ridiculous. It's not going to work. Two of them are going to go broke. Whoever does go broke, it'll be because of decisions made in streets like this. Eleonora Road in Melbourne's eastern suburbs was one of the first streets to be cabled by both Optus Vision and Foxtel. A mix of old and young families, a comfortable middle-class street, and just the kind of market pay TV is aimed at. Optus Vision was the first in this street, and Arthur Manton couldn't say no. We're a pretty uh, sociable street, and one night in December last year, our wives all went out to dinner, and uh, when they came home, most of us in the street had signed up for Optus. Uh, the, uh, the sales rep had caught us at a very weak moment. There was no women in the house to keep control over us. And what do you get out of it? Do you get anything out of it? Not a lot, I don't believe. Uh, we wouldn't watch very many movies. We watch a little bit of the sport, but I find the sport's really not the sport I'm interested in. There's lots of car racing, and uh, this weekend I noticed there was volleyball. That's not a terribly popular sport in Australia. So, What about the AFL? I've got that. Yeah, the AFL's on, but again, it's, it's replays. You watch the, you know, Channel 7 is uh, usually on a bit quicker than the, than the Optus uh, AFL channel. So, no, we don't watch that all that much, to be quite frank. And the, the Arthur Manton mightn't be all that convinced, but he's kept pay TV on. He's one of just over 300,000 Australians to have pay, about 6% of the nation. This was always a business that we knew would be a, a hard sell. People have been getting a lot of television in Australia free for a lot of years, so it's not surprising uh, that they're not moving in droves to, um, to start having to pay for it. Across the road, the Matthews family is more than happy with pay TV. What do you like watching? Uh, well, I probably watch movies, I suppose, because I work fairly long hours and I come home late and there's always a movie to watch. But in this family, it's sport which is the real lure. I got 30 channels, you can just channel flick through everything. <laughs> got a bit of everything. Uh, how much? Heaps of sport too, it's great. What sort of sport do you like? Uh, gridiron, 
uh, cricket, football, the football channel's great. Considering the time spent in front of the pay TV channels, there's no doubt about the impact it's made on their lives. So how much of your day would you spend watching it? Uh, am I working a full day or...? <laughs> if I was just at home like I usually am, probably, uh, nine hours. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> The Matthews are the dream pay TV family. They're hooked by the movies and the sport. Sports, you be the program director. Take a seat in the Foxtel Grandstand. If there's one thing overseas experience has taught, it's the vital role of sport in luring subscribers. The Queen's Park Rangers to demolish Coles Old Cup, Newcastle. In Britain, Rupert Murdoch paid out £670 million for the rights to the Premier Football League. Two tight ends. In the United States, he paid over one and a half billion dollars for the National Football League. He'll try and go straight over the top. A deliberate, steady shot. And Sydney are away in the 96 grand final. So, in Australia, it was hardly a surprise when he set his sights on our most popular winter sport, the AFL. The free-to-air and pay-TV rights to the AFL are held by the Seven Network. Had it, lost it, regained it. At the time, News and Telstra were the two biggest shareholders in Seven and had seats at the board table. So, when the rival Optus Vision bid for the AFL rights, it looked to be no contest. To Maxfield, it'll go all the way, kicks to Lockhart. News and Telstra appeared to assume the AFL would be theirs. They could not have been more wrong. Do you accept it was a strategic loss to Telstra and News? We would have liked to have uh, had uh, the, uh, uh, the AFL. Um, we haven't got it uh, at the present time, but uh, rights uh, change hands over time and uh, uh, we'll have to see uh, where they end up uh, in, the, uh, in the longer term. You know, I think a lot of people interpreted that as we must have presented a better business case to the Board of Seven in order to get that decision. And in that sense, I think it, it was the physical aspects of, of what came with it, namely the sporting rights, but beyond that, a, an important issue of perception. But why did News and Telstra fail to win the Seven Board? The Seven Board uh, acted uh, uh, as independent uh, directors and made their own choice of uh, where uh, they wanted to, uh, to go with uh, their uh, pay TV involvement. The Seven Board was to pay a high price for defying news and Telstra. Within months, both its chairman and its managing director were out of a job. The loss of the AFL was to be only the first body blow for the Foxtel partners. Oh! 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 The next was rugby league. This is the big ticket sport in the big ticket cable markets of Sydney and Brisbane. In order to capture the rugby league, News Corporation started something of a civil war. They made what I've always termed a Pearl Harbor attack on our players. All of a sudden we knew they were in there offering huge and vast amounts of sums of money to our players. I mean, naturally, we, uh, we had no alternative but to strike back. Had we not done so, they'd have taken all the players. On April Fool's Day, 1995, Murdoch's News Corporation had begun a guerrilla attack to launch a rival competition known as Super League. Every game will be like a grand final. I believe players perform better when the pressure's on. Super League, it's about leadership, it's about professionalism. Not according to the Australian Rugby League, who saw it as being about nothing other than profit for pay. 
The Super League assault was also a direct attack on the Packers by the Murdochs. Kerry Packers 9 Network already owned the rugby league rights until the year 2000. If New Zealand is saying that they expect Kerry Packer to tear up a, a contract with Optus Vision, well, he won't do that, and nor should he. I mean, I think Ken Arthurson used the line the other day, and he's right, this is not Dodge City. Anything doesn't go. While Packer owned the rights, he didn't own the players. In the space of just four weeks, Murdoch spent close to $10 million on an amazing shopping spree, signing up big names for his competition. In all, he spent around $270 million to get his Rebel League off the ground, over double the price of the more popular AFL. And by February this year, it was beginning to look like an expensive debacle. Federal Court Judge, Justice James Burchett, crash-tackled the Rebel League. For $150 million, you can do deals in back rooms at midnight, but you can't buy a judgment in this court. Mr Laughlin Murdoch. So Foxtel lost again. For the crucial first year of pay TV, when the real game is about capturing market share, the Rugby League was on Optus Vision. Five, four, three, two, one. Roll 40, thanks. Three to number one, Keith. We know by now that Mario Fennick is a Bears fan, and Blocker thinks St George perhaps can advance through to the grand final. Oh, no, I didn't say that. Oh, oh so that'd be hard. It gave Foxtel's competitors a crucial programming advantage in the early chase for subscribers, and they used it to the hilt. Let's have a look at Block as best right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, it was an important battle. I don't think there's any doubt about that at that time. Because you've got to remember, we didn't even have a business, really, when that started. It was the first of the head-on confrontations between us and News Limited. It was important. The Super League setback was not just a blow to the credit of News Limited, but its reputation. Justice Burchett condemned News Limited and accused its top executive, Ken Cowley, of acting with dishonesty. With a fierce eye on the reputation of Telstra, its competitors were keen to make a case of guilt by association. The whole point of the battle was in order to gain the pay television rights. There was absolutely no other point to it, as, as was the evidence given in the court, finally, even though certain other statements were made at the start of it. But that was the whole point of it. Now, the chairman of, of uh, Foxtel, I think I'm right in saying, is Mr Blunt. How could he not have been aware of these matters? Telstra chief Frank Blunt, who is also chairman of Foxtel, declined to be interviewed. In his place is senior Telstra executive and Foxtel board member Jerry Moriarty. Let's be very clear, the Super League uh, arrangements were entirely a News Limited uh, initiative. So are you saying that uh, Mr Blunt would have had no idea of what was going on? No, and... Uh, well, even though he's chairman of Foxtel, which is the company which we... Again, again I must repeat that uh, the, the Super League arrangements were entirely a News initiative. Without the AFL or the Rugby League, Foxtel was now very much on the back foot. Let me talk to Lindsay. Having entered the fight with a bold display of confidence, Foxtel was beginning to look as empty as its promises. Probably the best indicator of arrogance is that they had promised that they could provide world's best movie, documentary, current affairs and sporting content, when in actual fact, uh, they should have realised at the time they didn't have any. We will carry the best television programming from around the world and will commit to the people here that we will be the absolute best in coverage of networks that are available to the Australian community. And my personal favourite will be, of course, the interactive dimension of this business, the reason in part for going digital and the interactive possibilities that it creates. 120 channels initially of pay-per-view of new video on demand, 20 channels of uh, movies, 15 top movies running every 15 minutes. It's going to change, we think, the way people use television. We 
are dedicating 120 channels to movies. Each first-run feature begins every 15 minutes, and the sound will be like nothing you've ever heard. Foxtel promoted itself as the place with the best sport and movies. That's a very interesting point of view. <laughs> but as we'll see, it's a claim that costs them dearly and is a touch difficult to substantiate. If you look at the movie guides of Foxtel and Australis Galaxy, you'll see that they have the same programs. The reason is that Australis Galaxy beat Foxtel in the early race to sign up Hollywood Studios. It meant that in the months leading up to its launch, Foxtel had little or nothing to offer in the way of movies. So Foxtel signed an agreement with Australis Galaxy to share. And as seems to be the way in the pay TV deals, there was nothing gentlemanly about the way the agreement was struck. Australis Galaxy gouged an enormous price out of Foxtel for coming to its rescue. A deal worth $4.5 billion over 25 years. It was a deal that we, uh, we went into. We'd like to have lower programming prices, but we went into creating Foxtel knowing what our programming prices would be. So it hasn't been damaging, but it, it's, been, it's been higher costs than we'd like. I think our team thought from very early in the process that uh, we ought to accommodate Australis in some way. And that's a, probably a carefully chosen word, but it is... As part partners in the Foxtel joint venture, Telstra must now pick up the tab for the deal done by News Corporation. Well, we knew that they'd locked up uh, three of the studios in the United States. But according to Ross Kelso, Telstra was not even part of the negotiations. Well, the... The outcome was quite interesting because the joint venture discussions commenced in about October of 1994 and weren't consummated in the form of Foxtel till about March of 1995. But on Christmas Eve, without Telstra knowing, a deal was done between News Corporation and Australis, whereby News Corporation, rather than the joint venture, obtained cable rights to the Australis movie studios. We weren't uh, party to the initial uh, negotiation. We were involved uh, uh, later in the, uh, in, in the uh, conclusion of those arrangements. Yet now you are locked into a very expensive deal without having been a party to it. Yes, the, the supply of programming through uh, Australis, we acknowledge, is, uh, is expensive. As part of its movie deal, the Foxtel joint venture partners, Telstra and News Corporation, each took a 4% stake in Australis Galaxy. The deal with Foxtel cemented Australis Galaxy's place at the centre of the action. Though financially weaker, it has a healthy number of subscribers, around the same as the cable operators. Foxtel's subsequent efforts to undo the movie deal have left Australis Galaxy chief Neil Gamble a battered and angry man. The past uh, nine months for Australis, we've been uh, subjected to probably the most uh, comprehensive corporate buffeting that any company in Australia has ever had to receive. Um, the stakes are high and uh, Telstra and News Corporation earlier this year turned their guns on us and it has been a, a pretty dirty game as far as we're concerned. This pretty dirty game was beginning to exact a heavy toll on Australis Galaxy. Intense price cutting weakened the company and it needed more capital to survive. The Star Trek crew were travelling back three centuries in a recycled ship. First Foxtel offered to rescue Australis Galaxy by buying out the movie deal, but it was hardly an act of charity. Australis refused. They then decided that we would be better uh, dead than alive. In fact, they wrote to us some months ago saying uh, they would recommend the liquidation of Australis, which is an astonishing situation because Telstra and News have both got substantial investments in Australis, and I would have to think this is the first time major companies have actually tried to eliminate the value of their investments when they could have, in fact, been nurturing and growing that investment by way of the normal business relationship, a partnership relationship. In August, Foxtel went to Hollywood to talk direct to the studios that supply the movies. Nothing wrong with an innocent chat, but big players like News Corporation and Telstra don't have innocent chats. The so-called innocent chat now threatens to escalate into yet another costly court battle. Uh, they're interfering with a, a contract that's already in place. But aren't they entitled to go direct to the suppliers of these movies and try to get a 
decent deal for themselves? Uh, no, not until the year 2003. And even then, there's a process that's in place, which is a process of good faith negotiation, which, which has not started yet at this point in time. The studios and Australia need to sit down at a certain point and go through that process of negotiation first. It's categorically untrue that we're trying to undo the deal. It is true to say that we have had conversations, given the financial uncertainty of our supplier programming, uh, and any prudent company would do that. Australis has sent legal letters to Foxtel, warning that in their view, Foxtel is breaching Australian trade practices laws and United States antitrust laws. What kind of action are Foxtel News Corporation and Telstra opening themselves to? Well, clearly, if they uh, disturb a contract in place or that's in place or induce someone to breach a contract, then the consequential damages are very large. Uh, the numbers are in the hundreds of millions of dollars. They, they've written us some letters, but certainly uh, they can do whatever they'd like. It's untrue. While Australis Galaxy fends off the squeeze on one side from Foxtel, it finds itself joined in the predatory embrace of Optus Vision on the other. The Packer camp plans to take a 10% stake in Australis Galaxy. It will help keep Australis Galaxy alive, and that means Foxtel remains locked in the crush of its $4.5 billion movie deal. You know, Packer's in it to, to help Packer, and it's a big chip uh, to potentially play, depending how he uses it. Um, it's not great for Australis. Foxtel... Well, it's keeping Australis alive. Well, Foxtel is what's important to Astralis. And anything that damages Foxtel damages Astralis. And it is surprising that shareholders aren't a little bit more uh, active in, in looking at it, in our view. But uh, I haven't heard anybody say that Packer's in it to build Astralis. How much of this is about locking Foxtel into a, into a bad business deal? Uh, well, I think that's an added bonus. Just they put bonus. themselves there. I didn't. I'd like to keep them there. Beyond its movie deal, Australis holds another asset that gives Optus Vision a further edge. A satellite network, which allows it to beam programs into areas where cable will never be rolled out. Under the rescue plan, Optus Vision shares Australis Galaxy's satellite infrastructure from July next year. Don Hagen's Ausstar company distributes Galaxy programs by satellite to regional Australia. Uh, but to Optus Vision, uh, if it's successful, what they have is the right to use and to control to some extent a, a platform that took substantial time, money and effort for Astralis to create for the distribution of satellite services in this country. So it's a, it's a, it's a good leg up. The deal raises questions about the true relationship between Optus Vision and Astralis Galaxy. Foxtel argues the alliance gives Optus Vision an unfair advantage and is a first step towards takeover. It's a de facto merger. This is a merger. They're calling it an infrastructure sharing agreement, but it's a merger. It's, it's controlled by, by Packer and Optus Vision. They're calling the shots. Uh, this is going to be to the benefit of, if they in any way can make it so, of Optus Vision. It, it is a merger by stealth, though, isn't it? No, certainly not. Absolutely not. The terms of it are very clear. It is purely a sharing of infrastructure. The two brands stay there, the two packages stay there. Uh, it's nothing more than that. Fox History. Fox Travel. Optus Vision. Galaxy. Multi-channel TV. TV. So, after 12 months of the pay TV war, how are the cable guys going? Come September, the table looked like this. Foxtel had signed up about 115,000 subscribers. Optus Vision, 100,000. Australis Galaxy had about 108,000, but was sliding fast. Though lagging in subscriber numbers, Optus Vision chief Jeff Cousins was claiming victory. This business is absolutely in the winning position in the pay TV battle. Optus Vision had the AFL and the Rugby League and were also keeping the squeeze on Foxtel over the movie deal. But as far as the major strategic battles are concerned, they're over. They're over. And Optus Vision, as a pay TV operator, is absolutely in the winning position. 
But come 2.30 on the afternoon of Friday, the 4th of October, the battle for pay TV took a dramatic new turn. Well, uh, you've, heard, uh, you've heard the uh, verdict today. Uh, the situation is now that uh, it looks uh, as though there's going to be two competitions. So Super League appears to have the go, the go ahead, that is, from the courts to start in 1997. With me is our legal counsel, Philip Luff. Uh, Philip, you might just like to recap on what exactly the three justices had to say. Yes, Warren. Well, it's a substantial uh, win for Super League in that the, uh, the, the judgment of Justice Burchard has been set aside. Um, Foxtel had a big win, and by definition, Optus Vision was now looking a bit sick. Three appeal court judges ruled that News Corporation's Super League was legal. The public had every right to ponder the mysteries of the law. I can't believe for the life of me that we could win 100 nil in the eyes of one judge and uh, in the eyes of, uh, of three other judges virtually lose 100 nil. It's beyond me. Well, we're wrapped, but uh, uh, no, I don't think we're very happy. <laughs> Have you spoken to your father? Yes, it was the first phone call we made. And what was his reaction? Uh, he was wrapped as well. <laughs> <laughs> Is he coming to town? Are you really pleased with the Super League decision? You know, I, I thought always that, you know, the truth would, uh, and justice would prevail. Have you got all and, the teams uh, that you want in the Super League? Oh, yes. Did, do you want to say... No, look, we, we are very happy with Super League as it is. If people want to join us and share in our view of, uh, you know, great international game of rugby league, they're very welcome. And I know what rates in it ain't. By last Friday, Optus Vision Chief Jeff Cousins was putting a brave face on the defeat. This is the heartland of rugby league. You can't make these things up out of nothing. You can't stitch together uh, exhibition matches and expect people to either attend them or want to watch them. And you can't get them there by just adding a lot of hoopla to it. The Super League decision has prompted yet another spending battle. News Corporation committed around $270 million. Now, Optus Vision is said to be committing $220 million to prop up what's left of the old game. Uh, how bad's the Super League decision for Optus Vision? Well, it's uh, obviously not a good decision for them. It, uh, it splits the code, uh, a code which has already lost a bit of ground during the last year or so. Sport's a major driver. It does affect Optus Vision negatively. And looking back over the last 12 months, which camp has made the smarter moves? It, it depends on the month and the photograph you take that month because you and I could sit here with a camera and look at a year and a half ago in the position of Optus Vision and Foxtel, seven months ago, four months ago, today. And every time you took a photograph and you looked at it and you analyzed who was in it, you would come to a very different conclusion as to what the future might hold. Up in the boardroom, it's still difficult to call the winner. And down at street level, that's pretty well how it is too. In Eleonora Road, five families have given pay TV a go. Two of those gave it back within a month. One family switched from Optus Vision to Foxtel. Another is considering making the same change. Only one family has stayed with the same operator. Live AFL. Ian Lucas took Optus Vision on a special free offer for a month. And how did you find the movies? Um, some of them were, were quite good, but on the whole, they were movies that had been um, at the picture theatres a long time ago. It had already come to the video shop um, six, 12 months earlier. Now, how did uh, Sarah there in enjoy pay TV? Uh, well, Sarah, uh, she liked the, um, the Cartoon Channel. Yeah, and some of the movies that were on. And did she spend a lot of time watching the Cartoon Channel? Uh, not as much as she'd liked. <laughs> we had to limit her what, what she could watch. I found, too, that I was watching more television than if I didn't have the, um, the Optus. I forced myself to watch more television, so whether that's a good or bad thing, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, did Sarah kick up much of a fuss when the cartoons went? Uh, yeah, she would have liked it to... She didn't understand why it had gone. Like, one day it was here, one day it wasn't here. So, yeah, she... she um... I saw the television was there. Hey? The television moved there. The That's television right. was there. One day there was a box with Optus on it, and the next day it wasn't here. 
Then there's Arthur Manton, who signed up when his wife was out. So uh, is it worth the $49 a month? Um, probably not, in oh. my opinion, probably not. So are you going to let it go, or are you going to hang on to it? I'm going to hang on to it. Um, if I was being totally honest, which I guess I should be, I'm probably going to give Optus the flick and uh, give Fo uh, Foxtel a run. Optus was um, good for sports, if you're looking for a sporting channel. Matilda Payton tried Optus Vision and Foxtel, but got rid of both of them. Um, I actually found there were better quality movies on, on free-to-air TV. Uh, they had a lot of cartoon channels, which I didn't particularly like, or a lot of cartoon and children's shows, which I didn't particularly like and find a lot of value in. Uh, why did you get them in the first place? Curiosity, more than anything else. I just wanted to see what the offering was, what the hype was all about. And I, I really wanted to see what the difference between the two two vendors were. It's Thomas from Foxtel. How are you going? Welcome to Optus Vision. This is Darren. Yep, if you connect up any of your friends and that you'll get a, a T-shirt for each uh, voucher that you give to your friends. That particular package at $45.95 gives you the Disney Channel, which is fantastic for the kids. That's right. You should lose Channel 25 and you should gain 26 to 30. No worries. Well, let me welcome you on behalf of Opt Optus Vision. We are open 24 hours a day. So don't hesitate to call. Finding accurate figures on how many people sign on and sign off from pay TV is like trying to discover a national secret. OK, now what I'll have to do to actually um, stop the service for you, we'll have to transfer it through to another department. What will happen is the bill will get adjusted, but it will only get adjusted once we've got the Optus Vision uh, box back from you. Neither of the cable operators will admit precisely how many subscribers give it back, but each estimates the other is losing around 30%. Thanks for your call. Bye-bye. In the industry, it's called churn. You do accept that people are turning back the product having looked at it, and it's in significant numbers. The churn rates that we have in Australia are very, very satisfactory compared with international churn rates. You get churn in this business, it's a fundamental part of the business and it's something you've got to control. It's massively important because it's so expensive. Um, what a good business is about is getting hold of a customer and keeping them. You don't want to have to spend the cost, spend the money marketing to people more than once. You don't want to have to spend the, the time going out and connecting them and disconnecting them. It's terribly important. Despite the evidence from the streets, the pay operators claim the prospects are just fine. There is no doubt at all about what the size of the market's going to be. There is still some doubt about exactly where the shares will come out, although at the moment I think it's pretty obvious we're well ahead. In, in a share sense, but it's too early to, to ring the bell finally on that. But on market size, no, no, there's, there's no concern about that at all. Do you believe pay TV will ever really take off in this country? Oh, sure. I mean, it's taking off now. Um, we have exchanges where uh, over 30% of the, the people have the opportunity to take Foxtel are taking it. So, and if you look at the traditional take up rates of new technologies here, um, I mean, historically, this has been a, a market that, that is fast to consume. There are, yeah, would you be interested in upgrading to that and, you know, having the five extra channels just for nine ninety five extra a month? Because we do actually have several packages that incorporate the sports channels. What we can do, I can grab all your details now. We can work out what services you'd like to get, or you'd like the standard package. Um, we can arrange a date right now as well, a date that's good for you. What it, what it means is that uh, we will actually be sharing the use of an Austel satellite. No matter what the cable guys say, so far at least one of them is well behind its own expectations. Uh, are you aware that if you were to add Entertainment Plus onto your account, you'd be looking at a 5% discount on the whole package? Drawn up in April last year, this Foxtel business plan anticipated 200,000 subscribers by midway through this year. It managed only 100,000. Between them, the cable guys have already spent at least $2 billion to hook you up. And it's just the start. Look, most of the decisions in pay TV are not economically viable. Uh, we all know that. There's not room for three operators. There's probably not room for two operators in Australia. There's certainly not room for the head-to-head -head battles of spending hundreds of millions of dollars on supporting football codes. There is not the profit margin available in pay TV in Australia to support that. This is a fight to the death so that only one operator can survive at the end of the day. 
it goes back to two telephony companies having to go at each other. I don't know how they can get a payback on the kind of monies that have been invested. It can only be done against a very impressive business plan for telephony. Um, I would like to see that business plan. The sums of money are large. This is a small country of uh, only 18 million people. Uh, and for these companies to spend so much on a, a game like rugby league, which really is grappling to get international uh, recognition, uh, is quite surprising. Man came by to hook up my cable TV. We settled in for the night, my baby and me. We switched round and round till half past dawn. There's 57 channels and nothing on. Let's go! Tokyo and Washington argue this. And they're going to take you to Funky Town. Shut up. So far, the only clear rule of the spending battle is the one of staying in the game. If there's one conspicuous victim, it's an outsider, the rugby league. After a hundred years of competition, it's now split in two. Optus Vision. Foxtel. Galaxy Multi-Channel TV. It's not clear who else will perish or how much they're prepared to lose. It's the big game is capturing the lucrative telephony market. Pay is just the bait. You know, with this cable, Mrs Watson, you'll be able to access the internet and you'll have the Optus Vision local phone network. At last, a bit of competition. With all the blood and money being spilt, despite what they're saying, there must be some anxiety that more Australians are not biting. Maybe they'll like you for who you are. Noik. I'm George Negus, and on free TV tomorrow night on Foreign Correspondent, noted Australian filmmaker David Bradbury, 17 years down the track, goes back to the future in Central America. What did happen to the Sandinista Revolution in Nicaragua? The answer tomorrow night, 9.30. See you then. <laughs>